Good morning, second graders, and welcome back to our Changing Landforms unit. This week, we are starting chapter two, and we're going to be on lesson one today, which is going to be talking about diagramming landform changes. Okay, so um, really quickly before we go into our new stuff, we're going to focus on the cliff at the Oceanside Recreation Center again that we were looking at in the last chapter. So our question that we are going to focus on right now is what have we figured out about the cliff so far? So you can pause the video and go ahead and answer that question either by writing it down in your packet, talking to somebody at home, or thinking about it in your head. So some ideas that I have or that I know about the cliff is that we talked about how all landforms are made out of rock. So I know that because the cliff is a landform, it is made out of rock somewhere, which I can actually see in the picture on the sides of the cliff. Um, another thing that I know about the cliff is that rock can change shape. So I know when I'm thinking about the flagpole and how it was moving, I'm going to keep that in mind is that rock can change shape, which means that the shape of my cliff could also change. Okay, so the next question we're going to focus on is how did the cliff change happen? So that kind of, I just talked about that a little bit, is that we know that rock can change over time. We've talked about that in our readings from before. Um, thinking about examples like the mountains, um, we know that that rock can change because of wind causing little bits of rock to break off. Um, we know that water can also change rock and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so I'm assuming that the cliff change happened because there must have been some sort of a change to the rock. What could cause something that seems st so stable to change? Last chapter when we were reading, we learned that changes in landforms and changes to rock can either happen very quickly or it can happen over a long period of time. So it's not always something that happens right away. So our qu chapter two question that we're going to be focusing on um, throughout all of the lessons in this chapter is how did the recreation center's cliff change? So last chapter we talked about the word visualize. So remember to visualize means to make a picture in your mind to try it, to understand how something happens. So as geologists, we were not able to observe the cliff changing, but we can use models and make observations to visualize what we think may have caused the cliff to change. So when we're looking at this picture, we're gonna visualize what could have happened to cause the cliff to change. So I'm gonna give you guys a minute to just look at the picture and think about anything in that picture that you think could change um, or cause that clip to change. How do you think that the cliff might have changed? So you just took a minute to visualize what you think can happen and now we're actually going to take what we are thinking about and answer that question. So you can go ahead and pause the video and you can answer it either by writing it down in your packet, talking to somebody at home, or thinking about it in your head. Scientists can record what they visualize by creating diagrams. Diagrams allow scientists to share their ideas with other people. Diagrams are different from regular pictures. Let's explore a diagram and then we are going to create our own diagrams of what we think happened to the cliff. So in the picture to the left, this is a diagram that shows three events with the middle event missing. So we notice that at the top of the picture, it says a long time ago, we notice that in that picture, the cup of water is completely full. Then we see in the middle, we have our middle event missing, so we're not really sure what happened there yet. And then on the bottom, we see now, and we're noticing that now the cup of water is half full. So what happened to the water in the time between a long time ago and now? So I want you to take a minute to just think about what could have happened to the water. So we know at the beginning, it was totally full, and then at the end, it's half full. So what happened in that middle? The middle picture and its caption explain what might have happened. So in the middle now, we see someone with a glass of water drinking it. So the middle event says, drinking the water causes the cup to be less full. What else besides a person drinking from the cup could have happened to explain why the cup is half full? So I want you to take a minute to pause the video. You guys can answer the question by writing it down in your packet, talking to somebody at home, or thinking about it in your head. So some ideas that could have also happened, so we know one possible event could be somebody drinking it. 
Um, I, when I am also thinking about what could cause water to become less, um, I could think about maybe somebody knocked over the glass or tipped the glass over so some of it spilled. That could be another possible event. Um, or we also know with the water cycle that some of that water could have evaporated, which makes the water less full over time. Diagrams that show changes over time are an important way geologists show their thinking about how landforms change. So just like that last diagram showing us how water went from being full to less full, scientists also use diagrams to show change in landforms over time as well. So in your packets, you guys have a copy of this diagram. And the instructions are that you're going to look at the first picture of the diagram below and read its caption. So the first picture says a long time ago, and the caption says, the flagpole on the cliff was not very close to the edge of the cliff. So then you guys are going to look at the picture of the second event, and you are going to complete the caption to explain what you think could have happened to the cliff to make it change. And then you'll look at the last picture, which shows the diagram now. And the caption says, now the flagpole is closer to the edge of the cliff than it was a long time ago. This is because the cliff changed shape. So you are going to go ahead and pause this video and complete the diagram and caption that is in your packet. If you do not have access to the packet, you can pause the video and talk to somebody at home or even think in your head about what could have happened to make that cliff change. So these diagrams are a type of model. Remember, a model is something that helps scientists answer questions about the world. Some models are objects, like the hard candy model. The others can be diagrams, like the one that we just created. So an object, when we're thinking about models that are objects, we're thinking about hands-on things that we can actually do. Um, when we're thinking about diagrams, those are more things we see on paper, things that we're completing and filling out without necessarily having the hard object in front of us. So one of our vocabulary words is diagram. And diagram is an illustration that shows how something works or what its parts are. Okay. So today we're going to investigate this question, which is what can make landforms change? So in order to explain what happened to the cliff, we need to think about what can make a landform change. Geologists often compare different landforms to better understand what causes landforms to change. As a geologist, we will also compare different landforms. So in this picture over here, um, it says which parts of the landform changed and what could have caused the beach to change. So this is also in your packet. Um, so let's go ahead and read the directions together. So the directions say first, you're going to observe the landform in both pictures. With a partner, discuss what changed about the landform. So if we're looking at the long time ago, we're noticing that we see like a big hill that has grass on the top, and it seems like the water is further away from the hill. So there's a lot more of a hill and a little bit less water in that picture. Um, when I'm looking at the now picture, I'm noticing that the water looks like it's going all the way up to the hill. Um, so there's not as much of a hill anymore, and it seems like there's a lot more water. In each picture, circle the part or parts of each landform that has changed. So you're going to go ahead and when you pause the video and complete it, you're going to be taking a pencil and circling the specific parts in the pictures that you see look different. Look for evidence of what could make each landform change and then answer the question below, which is, what do you think made the beach change? So you're going to go ahead and pause this video and complete this diagram in your packet. And then when you're all done, you can talk to a partner or just think about the answers in your head. Okay, and actually we're gonna go back to this really quick. So one thing and one idea I'm having when I'm thinking about what made the beach change. So we've talked about how water can kind of cause rock to change or break down. Um, so when I'm looking at these pictures, I'm thinking that possibly over time, um, maybe the sand and the rock is changing and breaking down into smaller pieces, which is causing the shore to come closer into that hill than it was before. Okay, so you also have this page in your packet. Um, so these are two different landforms. 
The first one says, an arch is a landform that is shaped like an upside down U. So when we're looking at that, the top pictures on that worksheet, we're noticing that in the first picture, we're seeing that the arch looks really small. And then I'm noticing in the second picture, the arch is looking a lot bigger. And I'm noticing that this arch is placed, it looks like somewhere maybe in the ocean because I see water in the picture below. The pictures on the bottom show a valley so a valley is a landform that is shaped like a V. Same thing I'm noticing in this picture is that in the long time ago, I see water running through the middle, but the sides of the valley do not look super big. But I'm seeing that in the picture of the now. We still see that water running through the middle, but it seems like the sides of the valley are much taller than it was in the first picture. So you guys are going to complete these two worksheets in your packet. Um, so you can go ahead and pause the video, and I've done a lot of modeling for you of maybe things that you've noticed changing, but I really want you to be thinking about what could have caused these change, changes, what made the arch bigger, what made the valley sides taller. Okay, so what changed about the arch? Um, so again, like I said before, I'm thinking that with the arch, or what I'm noticing, is that it was really small in the first one and it seems like over time it got bigger. So how do you think that that change happened? When I'm thinking about landforms changing, I know that there are a lot of factors that can change rock. Um, one thing that we learned about was wind. We also learned about like for example in the ocean with, with creating sand, um, the big rocks hitting against each other is changing the shape. And we also learned that water can change the shape of rock too. So because I'm noticing that this arch seems to be in the middle of the ocean, I'm thinking that maybe the water is somehow changing the shape of the arch. Um, and I'm thinking that because just from what I can see in the picture, I know that the arch is in the middle of the ocean. So I know that water is a factor. Okay, and then when I'm thinking about what changed about the valley, so like I said before, I'm noticing that the sides of the valley are much taller in the second picture. Um, but I'm thinking about how that change could have happened. I'm kind of thinking along the same lines is that I know that there's water running through the middle. So I'm thinking that maybe water is a factor in changing the rock because we know that from our handbook of landforms and water, I know that water can change the shape of rock over time. And why do I think that? Um, I'm thinking it just because by looking at the picture, I can see the water there and that's evidence for me that that is a possible factor in what changed it. Okay, so what are some similarities you observed in the pairs of landform pictures? So you can go ahead and pause the video for a second and just think about this answer in your head about what are some things that are the same about the landforms in these pictures. So one thing I'm noticing that's the same is that both landforms are made of rock. Um, I know this because I know that all landforms are made of rock. So that's a similarity. Um, something else that I'm noticing is similar about these two landforms is that both of them have some sort of water running through them. Um, so with the arch, we're seeing that it's on top of the water, probably parts of it are going below. And then I'm noticing in the valley, I'm seeing water running through the middle. So I know that something similar is water is parts of both of them. Um, and then the last thing I'm noticing is they both have some sort of an opening. The arch has an opening that looks like an upside down U. And then I'm noticing the valley has an opening that looks like a V. So let's look back at our ideas about what could have caused the cliff to change. So in your packet, I know you guys already answered a question about what you think could have changed the cliff. So if you have any new ideas that you could add to the list, um, you guys can go ahead and pause the video and add it to your answer. Okay, and then I will look forward to seeing you guys back again for lesson two. Have a great rest of your day.